the Sky Dome. The Academy's of Al Safir's contribution to the desert landscape of the Sahar. Powerful wizards feel loyal and obedient to the animated constructs, elemental spirits, and beast warriors. It's time for the seven cities to reclaim their rightful place among the nations of Ashan. The wizard Ghazal sat the throne of renewal. Her weaknesses erased. She was made all-powerful and became the heroine of the world. The still day for accomplices of choice. Accept the blessed curse of the war. Or refuse and be obliterated. The nations of Ashan must rise to the occasion. Only united might they thwart this terrifying threat. There are those who will fall, and those who will rise to rewrite Ashan's history with their exploits. You shall lead the armies and heroes of the Forgotten Wars. everyone, this is Esper of the Fragdolls. We're playing Might and Magic, Duel of Champions. And today my co-host is going to be Pixel of the Fragdolls. Hello. <laughs> and today we're going to be battling anyone who's willing. So be sure to add Saber FD to your friends list on Duel of Champions mm. at DOC underscore demo underscore two to your friends list now. And we also have our guests. We've got Chase Straight, the player experience manager. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello. <laughs> and we've also got Dan Vargas. He is the art director for Duel of Champions. Thank you for joining us. And we've also got Simon, and I'm totally going to mess up your last name, Vinod, uh, the game designer for Duel of Champions as well. So thank you guys for coming on. You got my name right. <laughs> awesome. I win. Do I get an achievement for that in Duel of Champions? Because that would be really awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll check where I can. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully I can get on that achievement too. Right? But just so you guys know, what are we going to be talking about today? So first off, we're going to be talking about the new expansion, a lot of great cards. We're going to be talking about the new Academy faction. We just checked out a trailer for that. And then of course, we're going to be showing off the Altar of Wishes. I know you guys were talking about it in chat earlier, and you guys are super excited about that. And basically, the Altar of Wishes is a new way for players to get their hands on the single cards that they need. So... Yeah, and also if you guys have any questions at all for any of our devs, make sure to drop them into chat, and we'll be pulling them as we go, and we'll try to get as many answered for you as possible. And I know this is really important. We're going to be giving away a bunch of game codes. I mean, yes. Chase, Chase hooked us up. He hooked us up with a bunch of codes, and I know you guys all want to win. So we're going to have a lot of different ways for you guys to do that. We'll be going to be going over it a little more once we get started. So let's see here. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to type your questions in the chat, and you can also tweet them to us. All right. So I know you guys want to win some codes, so we're just going to start that right now. Um, if you have a Facebook account or a Twitter account, go to facebook.com backslash fragdolls or to twitter.com backslash fragdolls and look for our latest post um, concerning our dolls and dubs going on right now. All you have to do is either share if you're on Facebook or to retweet if you are on Twitter and you will be entered and our lovely Spectra will be choosing winners throughout the stream. So. And let's hear. And as you guys can see on the screen right now, we actually have Saber of the Fragdolls playing. Um, and you'll be able to challenge her all day. I'm actually going to copy paste the account name she's on. I think she's playing a pretty intense deck right now, so we want to know if you guys beat her in chat, of course. Like, that's, that's very important to us, but I have a feeling Saber is going to do some work, right, Etta? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so if you guys want to play with Saber, um, you'll be able to add her on this account. And I think I'll be rooting for Saber. How about, how about you, Pixel? I mean, I got to root for a girl, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys can all get stumped. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, she has been practicing a bunch. I know over the last week she's been streaming a lot on our channel and then on her personal channel. 
But um, just so you guys know, if you do want to also follow Dual Champions, that is possible as well. I'm going to link their information in chat too. We just have, we have all the links for you. So many links. And so many codes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I think we're actually going to get started with a quick interview with Chase Strait, our player experience manager for Dual Champions. Hello. <laughs> hit, 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 me, hit me with some uh, tough questions. Or, or you could also call him Pandar. I know you guys see him on the forums. You see him trolling in game quite a bit with his. Uh, <laughs> have you been playing Necropolis mostly lately, or have you been? In no, the academy? I, I gave up on my Necropolis deck. <laughs> I've been playing around with Sanctuary and obviously Academy now. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite got it down. I think Anna and Ed have oh, yeah. better decks than me. I freaking love watching, Academy, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, I was watching you guys tear it up with, uh, you've got a pretty disgusting deck right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first off, I think the most important question for all the new players that we might have here, what is Might and Magic Duel of Champions? Um, so Might and Magic Duel of Champions is an online free-to-play uh, strategic card game. Um, so think of, you know, other, like, traditional, like, collectible card games, and it's like that, except it's online, and it's all for you. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's kind of, like, the basic of the game. If you're, like, a Magic the Gathering fan, you'll, you'll uh, it'll be familiar. Mm. So, I know we're showing it off on PC today, but is Duel of Champions available on any other platforms we might have heard of? Yeah, so, um, it's also available on iPad. Um, and it's pretty sweet. It's like the first true um, like cross-platform game from Ubisoft. So uh, your login will work on both devices. Like I can play if you're on an iPad, I can play on my PC. Uh, but yeah, so you can get on PC or iPad. Okay, and then um, I know we already talked about the cost of Dual Champions, and it's I mean it's pretty it's pretty expensive. And by expensive, <laughs> I mean you mean not expensive. Yeah. At all. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a totally free-to-play game. Um, you, of course, can buy booster packs, um, you know, with regular money if you want to get them faster. Um, but we, we take a really strong emphasis on, um, call it, like, fair-to-play, you know? So, like, none of the none of the content in the game is, um, you know, locked off to people who haven't paid or whatever. You can, you can get all the cards in the game um, just from playing. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And so I think I think Pixel definitely has an addiction to pack opening, right, Pixel? I do. God, I love the foils in this game too. They're just, they look so shiny, even though they're virtual. I just want to reach out and snatch them off my screen. Yeah, they're great. I'm, yeah, I get pretty uh, pretty hooked on those premium cards. So they're pretty funny. <laughs> I always like feel like you kind of have that guilt when you like go into a match and like half your cards are shiny and you're like, yeah. Really, I'm you feel guilty because I feel awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so how would you describe if you could? Okay, in one sentence, how would you describe Dual Champions? I know that's a really tough question, but I'm just I'm curious because everyone has a different you know view of Dual Champions. But I'm curious, one sentence, how would you do it? Um, my sentence would probably be, I should probably go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> because once you start playing, you won't be able to stop playing. Okay, I like it. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah, yeah. That, would, that would be my one sentence to describe it. <laughs> okay, so what type of uh, game modes will we see? So if you start Dual Champions, what are, what are some ways that you can kind of play the game? Um, well... So starting out, you know, we have a we have a really great tutorial actually. Um, so we're like you know, talking about the tutorial, but it's pretty sweet when you start out. Um, there's, so it's like first part of the single player campaign, and then there's two other single player campaigns uh, you can go through after that. So when you're starting out, it's a great way to get um, obviously to learn about the game, um, but also it's really generous with the seals and rewards that you get from it. Um, so you know, it's that first like initial boost. Uh, booster thing and then there's also you know you have regular like online ranked matches which are 1v1 um it's like uh, it'll match you up with someone of similar elo online elo is your skill level um and then there are also uh, tournaments so you can either like join an existing tournament or create your own tournament um you can use tournament tickets to do that um and then obviously we have the uh the road to 
Wars thing, which we might talk about a little bit later, which is not like an officially supported um, like game mode or whatever, but it's like an esports competition. I mean, do you want to do you want to bring up a little overview of the Road to Paris real quick? We could we could talk. About I, it. You're pumped about, about it, right? I'm so excited. I want to go to Paris. Uh, I want to go to Paris too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so do a lot of Jewel Champions players. Um, so Road to Paris is our international esports competition. Um, we're flying eight people to Paris at the end of this month for Paris Games Week. Um, and there are like a bunch of different like roads to get there so they can compete online and like leaderboard competitions um, uh, or at different live events. I know that you ladies have been to a few of them. Yes. Kublai Khan, Kublai Khan, Kublai Khan, Origins, Gen Con, Fan Expo Canada. Um, those are just the the North American ones um, that we were at. But yeah, so there's like a bunch of different ways to get there. We're actually, um, I think we just crowned over the weekend um, the last of the finalists at Eurogamer Expo in London. Um, so yeah, so if you go to Road to Paris, like with the numeral Road to Paris dot com. Um, you can check out everything about the competition there. Um, over the next month leading up to it, we'll be introducing our eight finalists um, and kind of give them a little bit more background on them, but we'll some like video content and stuff like that so you can meet uh, people competitors. So did you have a favorite competitor by any chance? I mean, you I know you like all of them, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> um, it's super, I mean, yeah, they're all, they're all pretty fantastic, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do want to give a special, special shout out to our boy, uh, Crixius, um, who actually did not, is not going to make it to Paris. Um, oh. I know, right? He, uh, he lost to Smurfburn, um, so all the North American live tournament winners played against each other, um, last week in order to, uh, for like one of the bits to Paris. Um, but Crixius, he's this super dope dude. Um, who's been streaming a ton of the game, doing a lot of like beginner tutorials and stuff like that. He came out to Gen Con um, and ended up winning that. But yeah, he he's been he's been really fantastic. And you can like hit him up at like twitter.com slash Crixius. Mm -hmm. I don't spell that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we had the, we had the chance to meet. Um, I know Pixel and I had the chance to meet some of the players for the Road to Paris tournament series at some of these different events, and it's mm -hmm. crazy to see how passionate people are about the game and they put a lot of work in these tournaments. They do days. and a lot of the people that we met especially at KublaCon were first time players and it's really cool to see that they've stuck with the game and they are just that addicted to it now so it's fantastic. Mm, definitely and I know if you guys are chilling and you also want to play while you're watching we have our, our devs actually playing right now on an iPad. I think I see Simon working <laughs> on it right now yeah and so if you guys want to challenge them too um, what name? What name are you guys under? I think you guys are under one similar to. Yeah, it's uh, doc underscore demo underscore three. Okay, so if you guys you want go. to challenge our devs, you can challenge them right now. Just add that. So I, I was actually playing against uh, an unfortunate player that doesn't know about the fractal so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That so. is very unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's going to join the stream uh, in a few seconds. Oh, cool. oh, that's awesome. That is really cool. Thank you. <laughs> and so, right. Pixel, do you want oh. to bring up how people can share? <laughs> I hear you guys want codes, right? So, it's going to be really easy to get them today. Um, if you have a Twitter account, Facebook account, log on there and go to twitter.com backslash fragdolls or facebook.com backslash fragdolls and you'll see the most recent posts that we've made there. All you have to do either share or retweet and you will be entered to win a couple of grand prize codes which has a lot of goodies for you to get some new packs and as well as some other codes that we'll be announcing throughout the stream and always the uh, lovely Spectra is dropping a ton of codes into chat right now and I think she's putting spaces in there which is confusing you guys but make sure you take out the spaces first and then <laughs> put them into the shop and you will be rewarded with lots of goodies so good luck yeah, luck getting them. <laughs> the grand prize codes, we're, we're keeping it a secret for now, but it's... Yeah, it's a surprise. Yeah, it's, it's a surprise present that I'm going to be very jealous of whoever wins, because we kind of have an idea of what's in them, so I know you guys are probably a little pumped up. You guys seem really, really excited about, about codes. Yeah. 
And so I think it's time for us to actually begin our interview with Dan, the art director for Dual Champions. Dan, are you excited? Yeah, yeah, I'm totally excited. You pumped up? <laughs> okay, so real quick, do you just want to introduce yourself and say a little bit about what you do? Sure, yeah. Hi, my name is Dan Vargas. I'm the art director on um, Dual Champions. Uh, um, and yeah, I've been, on the, I've been on the team for like about a, about a year now. Um, I'm the lucky guy. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who basically gets to put, up, put all the cool drawings inside the game. And they are really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so good job so far. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been your favorite part about this position that you're in? Um, well, there's, there's a couple things. There's, um, first, this is my first time working on kind of like a high fantasy kind of game with like wizards and dragons and swords and stuff like that. So that's that's really a lot of fun. I mean, I've been in the, in, in the games, developing games for over 12 years now, and this is like the first time I got to work on that kind of stuff. So that's cool. Um, and the fact that it's like illustration. So um, uh, a, a lot of what the artists get to do or we get to do is the final product that, you, you know, that, that the players get to see. Um, so you really have a lot of personal touch and really a lot of um, uh, contribution to the game. Mm -hmm. And so I know I asked Chase this briefly, but how would you describe DOC to you, like to yourself, in one sentence? Man, how do I, how do you follow up with Chase's description? Right. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> It'll be our little competition for the day between us. <laughs> Wait, do do we yeah. win card codes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I get card codes too. Yes. <laughs> Man, um, oof. Yeah, it's it's gotta be around the around the same lines, you know. Like uh, one a.m., maybe I should stop now. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or uh, this game is so awesome. Oh, that's uh, good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, good brain to it. Hard to say. Yeah, Chase, Chase is gonna have to take the the, the trophy. For me. <laughs> He's gonna get the codes. He's gonna get the codes today. Yes, I'll, I'll get out. I'll try and get the next. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can you give us like a little, maybe like a description of like your day-to-day -day, like duties as art director? All right, come in, um, get some coffee. Okay. Uh, a lot of it really is uh, the day-to-day -day is um, uh, for the bulk of the production at least is, is getting all the um, at the beginning is getting all the, the the card descriptions assigned out to the various artists that we have on the project, and from there basically uh, taking in. Um, the different stages of the illustrations, whether it's you know a thumbnail st stage, a rough color stage, or a final stage, and basically uh, directing it, saying you know, this is too red, that was too purple, or you know put more uh, put more magic into this, or you know, something more along magic. <laughs> more, <laughs> more, more cowbell. We need more cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. Um, um, and then. Um, yeah, so that's the, the biggest part of it is, is, is just making sure that um, the art that we're, we're creating is in line with the Might and Magic universe and, um, you know, the qualities there as well. Okay. So when you're, when you're playing, what is your, what is your favorite thing about actually playing Duels of Champions? Man, oh, there's, there's a lot of cool things. I mean, like, you, you can jump on really easily for, like, a few quick minutes, which is it's never a few quick minutes. It's never, it's never a few quick games, but it feels like it's going pretty fast. Um, the other thing is that there's, there's just, especially now with the Forgotten Wars release, there's um, there's so much to learn. There's so many, like, you know, the, the, the gameplay changes a lot, um, new mechanics. Um, the other aspect, too, is that um, playing with friends, uh, being able to challenge these guys. Well, actually, I don't challenge the designers very much because <laughs> owned by those guys. Um, but uh, some of my other friends who are not as good at like beating up on them. <laughs> <laughs> noob slang? Noob slang into that? There's achievements for that, you know? You don't, you, you, you 30 friends <laughs> against friends? Those are, the, those are the kind of friends you need to get on your, on your friend list. Um, but, uh, but apart from that, yeah, that's, th those are the main things. The other part of it is the, the gameplay itself. It's, it's really addictive and it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a lot of fun. Do you have a faction that you might favor by any chance out of all of them? Yeah, um, I'm gonna say right now it's coming back to Sanctuary. I've, I've never been able, I've never had a great sanctuary deck, 
but now there's a there's a couple new features and a couple or rather a couple new mechanics in there that are kind of making it interesting. And with the altar of wishes, I'm I'm able to get the hero that I uh, that I really you know the heroes or the epic card that I really want or need to make those decks you know unbeatable, mm -hmm. which that's never really the case. For me. <laughs> So do you have a favorite card and maybe a card that you really love the art on? It gives you happy feelings? Happy feelings. <laughs> that is so hard. There's so many good artists on this um, that have contributed to this project. Uh, that's that's really, really hard. I'll, I'll, I'll say, hmm, I will say, I'll say the Pow Death Seeker. Okay. He's the one. Um, Guillaume Manuel, he's the one who, who painted that one of the... Um, it just has a very, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, it, it's just got a cool feeling to it. What's the word for it? What's, what's that art style that I'm, oh my God, I'm losing my, I just had it. It was on the tip of my tongue. Um, suggestive, it's, it's, it, it doesn't, you know, you, you, you can see a lot in the art in itself and each person sees a different thing in a different way and it's, it's just super cool. Yeah, it's really a, like aggressive. Almost mm -hmm. like whenever I see it, I'm just like, oh man, I know I'm not gonna like what's about to happen. But like, whenever I draw it, I'm like, yes, <laughs> the game is mine. <laughs> Best one, on top of being really cool art, it's um, it's a super cool game uh, card in terms of gameplay. So, mm -hmm. so that's gonna be one of my faves. But uh, you know what? I'll, I'm a, I love all the art. In there. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to, right? I kind of have to. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> So can you maybe tell us a little bit about like the different art styles we might see in the cards in Dual Champions? Well, in, ter in terms of art styles, that's really, it's basically coming down to the individual artists. So it's not necessarily an art style, but an artist's style. Mm -hmm. So you might recognize certain ones, like, um, for example, um, Noboru and um, the Crusader Chaplain in, in this, in the Forgotten War series, that's, a, that's by the same artist. or. Uh, or um, the abysmal worm and the uh, the abysmal worm and uh, that big night guard dude, the um, eight health dude. Uh, uh, Crusader commander. Cru no, no, Crusader, the imperial imperial guard. Sorry, yeah, that, that's another particular artist style. So in terms of like um, styles, and again, that's what makes it so cool in this game is because you really get to see the individual artist's style. It's not like it goes through, you know. Um, a concept which goes into modeling, which goes into texturing, which goes into like a process, a pipeline that it eventually makes everything uh, so uniform and unique. Each card, the final touches on each card was done by the individual artists. Mm -hmm. so, I have a quick uh, question. Um, how, many, how many people do you work with? How big is your, your art team? Our team? Uh, internally, we have, we have four, four folks. We have um, three, three guys and a girl on, on the, in the studio here with me. Mm -hmm. uh, We've also have a team of about 20, 20 or more other artists. Wow. Um, some of them outsourced, or some of them are in, in, in other companies who we've, we've um, hired on to help us with the, the creation of cards. Because I mean, 150 cards is a lot of that's a lot of cards. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of hurting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like 20, 20 or uh, uh, between 20 and 28, somewhere around there. So that's all the different styles you sort of have to sort of um, mm -hmm. corrupt a lot of, uh, a lot of art. Mm -hmm. So how do you think like the creative process behind the, the creation of some of this art, how does it usually work? Like how do you guys kind of decide like the route you go for? Mm -hmm. Well, it all, it all kind of, well, first of all, we're in the Might and Magic universe. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely, you know, if, if you're old school, if you played the, uh, you know, uh, Hero 6 and whatnot, um, there's be, there's definitely a history to the to the game uh, itself, the universe. Um, so that's the base of it. That's the context of it. Uh, creative process starts with the, these guys, the designers. So they um, basically uh, uh, put together um, a design um, that makes a fun gameplay, and I work with them to sort of come up with a, a good way to, um, I guess, give it give the game design some form, some visuals. So, for example, Simon says, hmm, I need a really cool shooter creature that can do, like, you know, high damage, and he's got some kind of magical finny thing that he does. And I'll say, oh, okay, well, how about a, a shaman with blah, 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 something like that. So we come up with these, basically, these, these graphical intentions, if you will, for, like, the list of the cards or, or, or all of the, um, the creatures.
creatures, spells, and fortunes, and whatever um, that you have in the game. And uh, we basically uh, we hash it out from there. It sounds like the dream job for like anyone who's into video games and loves art, because it sounds like you guys have a lot of freedom with what you're able to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if any of you viewers are in chat and you're looking to go into the gaming industry, but you're also really skilled at drawing, this might be a good route for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm, a, I'm totally enjoying this project. Um, again, small team, you know, um, simpler art process, mm -hmm. um, a lot of individual, individual, uh, individuality and creativity gets put into each and every little aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so much fun. Yeah, I do feel really kind of <laughs> so what's your what's your background like what what other titles have you worked on what sort of schooling sure. did you go through yeah um so uh oh, way back i i figured out way back in college that i wasn't really good at sciences <laughs> calculus and computer programming so i took a drawing and design or a drawing class and a design class and i loved it and i i, I kind of knew it because i'd always been like drawing in you know my sketchbooks in my notebooks and in my textbooks all throughout um, in high school and college too. <laughs> so um, yeah, so somewhere mid midway in, in college, I figured out. I guess I'm pretty good at art, so I, I followed up with art. Um, and then, you know, years gone by, I I, um, I took up. Um, I learned about computer animation and digital um, uh, and digital effects. So this is way back in like 1999. <coughs> uh -huh, um, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> that, that, um, I got into the game industry, uh, and originally I really wanted to do animation, but um, I, I started off in motion capture, actually, at Electronic Arts, and so I spent like uh, three years there, um, working on like every single sports game. Wow. <laughs> A whole bunch of other cool games, too, Lord of the Rings, James Bond, um, some, some really, really cool, fun stuff. Um, Shortly after that, I went to um, another team, worked on a, a, a car racing game. It's called Need for Speed Underground. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked on that for like uh, three years or so. And um, uh, what else? Tom, my whole life story here. Um, <laughs> we don't mind. We're interested. Yeah, Great. that's cool. really cool. After, after the Need for Speed team, I, I joined um, um, Next Level Games. It's a small independent game developer, uh, also in Vancouver. Um, we did um, uh, Spider-Man, Friend or Foe. I was a technical artist on that. Oh, and so for the for the for the Need for Speed project, I I've, I've done conceptual art. I've done uh, modeling and, and and texturing for them. Um, and then on 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 uh, Captain America as well for for the next level games, I did some technical art. Then uh, ended up here at Ubisoft. Ubisoft. I've been here with Ubisoft Quebec Studio for about four years now. And um, I've got to touch a lot of the cool games. So I, I did get to work on AC3. Awesome. Um, so we're, actually, Michelle, I worked with you a little bit on, um, well, I mean, you helped me out with on, Mar on Marvel Avengers. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> you had to work the floor with me. That yeah, time. I remember. We were, we were kicking butt, and we, a lot fun. of little kids were playing. <laughs> I, that's, a, that's a completely different game. So yeah. you go, AC3 is triple A. Um, Marvel is totally, you know, casual and, and, and fun, and now I, I'm I'm here on uh, Duel of Champions. So um, yeah, pretty fortunate, pretty 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 lucky um, path, if you will. Yeah, that's an impressive resume for sure. Yeah. Subtle subtle brags, subtle. right? <laughs> like no big deal, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you have any advice, maybe, for people who are interested in joining the gaming industry? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, it's fun. And it's a lot of hard work and a lot of competition, um, especially now. But, but I mean, if you have an appreciation for games and you have any kind of predilection towards art, programming, or design, it's definitely the thing for you. And it's 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 more like a one of those kind of uh, follow your dreams kinds of advice. You know, where it's not like. I have mean, good schools to go. You can get into specifics for each of the different, um, each of the different um, specialties. But um, definitely for like uh, for artists, I would say um, I would say for artists, try and give yourself a really, really good, strong traditional base um, wherever you're going to get that. Whether that's like traditional um, uh, schooling, so you know, fine arts, um, 
uh, drawing design, um, all that color theory, all that, all that um, the core, the core, um, with the core stuff about art. That's that's really important to get before you get into all the the fancy stuff like the 3D and you know, shaders and textures and blah blah blah. Because mm -hmm. it's all about it's always come it's always going to come down to like um, the art and that's you know the, the technology is always going to change so um, just work on your you know your core skills that you got um, to make yourself super awesome and get paid millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <laughs> millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Yeah, and I have one more question for you, Dan. So. Yeah. I know we've seen a lot of Duel of Champions cosplayers popping up. How does it feel seeing the art kind of come to life? Uh, that's that's like um, what is it, what do they say? They say imitation is the highest form of flattery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's 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 uh, it's really cool. It's really flattering. Um, even just seeing stuff like I know some of the people online on, on the forums they're posting um, their own alternate arts, their own ideas, and stuff like that. That's that's really it's it's inspiring and um, it's encouraging. Keep it up. They keep making up those crazy costumes and, like, and all sorts of cool drawings and stuff like that. So we love it. Mm -hmm. Is it is it really like kind of flattering? I guess in a lot of ways. Do you like well, get pumped up? Oh yeah, I'm like bragging about it all the time. <laughs> Mom, look, I got some costumes. <laughs> Mom, check it out. <laughs> and just so you guys know, you just got the chance to meet Dan. He's the art director of Duel of Champions. Um, and just so you guys know, you'll be able to ask more questions in chat. We're going to be doing a little Q&A sesh with both of our devs. And also, they're going to be taking turns playing Duel of Champions on the iPad, as you can see right there. And if you want to play against our devs, you can add them right there. Um, I copy-pasted the name in chat. I'm not going to play against me because I'm not as good as Simon, so I'll let you <laughs> Oh, you'll let them, you'll let them win? I'm getting really bad draws right now. That's the worst. Okay, and so, um, Pixel, would you do you want to talk about a little bit of how people can maybe win? For sure. For sure. So again, um, we're giving away codes throughout the entire stream. Uh, you guys are getting the chance to randomly grab them from chat as Spectra drops them in there. And again, make sure you take out the spaces before you put them into the little box in the game. Uh, and if you also want to guarantee yourself another chance to win a code, make sure you go on to twitter.com backslash fragdolls or facebook.com backslash fragdolls and look for our latest tweet or Facebook post about this live stream and simply share it, retweet it, Whatever, tell us how awesome we're doing. And uh, yeah, we will go ahead and randomly pick some people to win some codes and we'll announce them at the end of the stream. Mm -hmm. And then just so you guys know, you can actually download Dual Champions right now. Like you can literally just go. DualChampions.com, yep. do it. Download it, the game's actually free to play so you don't have to worry about spending any of your, your hard earned, you know, life money. Dollars. Yeah, dollar dollars. <laughs> you can just go download, start playing and you can challenge Saber who's you know, challenging people right now, and then also our devs, because they're, they're ready for action. I think um, our player experience manager, Chase, is also playing as well, and so you can add him at Pandar. So, yes. And he wants to battle. Are you, are you hungry for blood? I am hungry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> eating right now. But... <laughs> What's your ELO, Chase? <laughs> Not high. It's like five. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like so five. that means if you uh, play against him and you beat him, maybe you'll win a code there too. Yeah. All the codes. Like they, they hooked us up to to make sure you guys got the chance to open some new cards. So we all want to open open them packs. Like, oh, I wish I could open packs right now. How about <laughs> and so now I think we want to give you guys the chance to meet Simon. Pixel, take it away. All right, so Simon's still playing, so I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and distract you and make it a little bit easier for your opponent to beat you here. And, uh, yeah, so let's just roll right into it. You're the game designer on Duel of Champions. Um, so what exactly does that entail for you? Uh, I'm a game designer on the um, Duel of Champions because we're a fan of game designer for such a small th team. Not just you? Oh my gosh. Oh, just I me. thought you did everything. 
No, uh, I'm actually doing only one thing, and that that's working on cards. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm the one responsible for uh, the stats on the cards and the, how they end up, uh, and the balancing. Uh, I'm um, working a lot with uh, top players, uh, which uh, we call the VIPs, mm -hmm. uh, are which are uh, among the best players that we uh, we see on the uh, Duel of Champions. So. Uh, when someone says that a card is OP, you have to uh, consider the fact that there's a lot of good players that went through those cards too. So maybe you should uh, look at it uh, once or twice before saying that it's overpowered. Right. Um, apart from that, there's a lot of other designers that are working uh, specifically on uh, features and uh, econ economic balance or stuff like that. So we have a lot of... Uh, uh, manpower behind the design of uh, the Duel of Champions. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually really cool that you work so closely with the uh, community that actually plays yeah. the game. I think that's really awesome. Um, so what has been your favorite part about being a game designer on this game then? Uh, you have to know that th this is the first project uh, which I've been a uh, game designer on. Oh cool. Uh, wow. but it's it's a blast, really. It's a, a really cool game to work on. It's really fun because it's uh, free to play. It's it's kind of a, not the same mentality that you would see on uh, on other projects. So it's really cool because it's really free in, in a way because we the project is never really done. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't know where you're going to to go next. Because it's not because we we've done the altar wishes that we're done. We're we're going to something else. Uh, we have other features that we want to do, so it's really exciting because you're building up upon something that you really love. How how can you not love a project like that? As a designer, it's a dream. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, working working on something like that, especially since I've been there uh, since the very beginning, uh, when the the, the game uh, was really really different. Uh, so it's really fun to see how. Uh, we went from point A to point F. <laughs> so then before you became a game designer, um, what were you doing before that? Uh, before that, I was a uh, lead tester on the, on the project. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was a, a tester. So uh, that, that's uh, the classic route that you... Uh, route that you uh, can take uh, as a, to, to get to the, the job that you want, the dream job that you want. It's not necessarily the best one because uh, it doesn't open you uh, all the doors. But in terms of design, it, it's probably one, one of the good ones. And uh, I think that uh, starting as a tester is always uh, has some kind of benefit to it because you see how the work, the, the game sometimes doesn't work in a how it, it affects the production and uh, how people should work to, to, to make it better, to, to make it flow a bit more when, when you get to, to the end of a, a project like that. So mm -hmm. it's really a benefit to have worked uh, as a tester. Awesome, awesome. See, guys, that is how you guys can get started in the gaming industry. Right there, for all you viewers in chat right now. Work your way up, kick some butt. Exactly. Keep yep. kicking some booty. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to go back to this question because the other two have answered it. And now I want to hear how you would describe uh, Duel of Champions in one sentence. Uh, <laughs> so tricky. Pretty, pretty I know it is. It's chess. What was it? Trading card game meets chess. Oh. All right, awesome. That's a strategy. Wow. It sounds so refined. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he thought about it. He thought about it. Well, I'm a designer. I'm, I'm, oh, oh that, that's one other thing that uh, I, I have to do, that I have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of tasked to, to, to be uh, the one that says what what is drawn uh, on the cards. So I, I'm telling this guy what to draw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it for all the cards, but uh, usually I'm the one that uh, that's responsible for the content on, on the cards. Oh, so you you like think of some like vision or whatever, and then they actually make it formed into some awesome illustration. Yeah, I, I'm kind of the link between between the the, the gameplay and the, the storyline. Also, I'm working uh, with a uh, 
the scriptwriters to, to make sure that we have a good storyline, something that uh, uh, that people can read at some point. Because uh, right now we don't have a lot that's uh, been pub published, but we've been working on a really cool storyline for Forgotten Wars and the, the, the follow-up to Forgotten Wars. Uh, just to make sure that we have something uh, like context to it, right? Something that's cool, also, and uh, something that can be told through cards. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So you obviously play a lot of this game. Um, what faction do you favor? What's your favorite? Sanctuary. Without a doubt, that was that was a really quick answer. So so why is that? Well, it, it's. It's really the, the, the type of player that I am. Uh, I, I play a lot of Magic, The Gathering, mm -hmm. and I'm a combo player. I, I, I like to have control of the board. I, I know <laughs> that right now Sanctuary is not really the best faction out there. I hope that uh, Forgotten Wars fixes that. Uh, but I really love the playstyle of uh, Sanctuary and the feeling of uh, trying to control the board, control your, your opponent. I see. Uh, I see Esper over there, like shaking her head. Yeah. She's like not about that. She hates it. <laughs> I hate combo players so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you usually play really aggressive. Yep. Like get in there, do a lot of damage like, in the beginning. Super quick. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't judge though. People have their own play styles. It's fine. Simon's the guy that's gonna like totally <laughs> deny you and then <laughs> annihilate you in Endgame. <laughs> I'm a really good Inferno player too. Sometimes I just want to turn my brain off and uh, play something really aggressive. Hey, uh. <laughs> uh, just saying that uh, the Inferno's brainless, but I, I, I like to have uh, some kind of deck that's really aggressive, yeah. that you don't have to think about uh, what you're doing. Just uh. go in there and just smash some heads. <laughs> so then, what's your favorite card? It could be out of, um, you know, the new ones that were just released, or in the entire game, whichever it's, would be easier for you to answer. It's like asking a kid, what's your favorite candy? Right? All of them. All of them. <laughs> uh, I'd have to say that it's um, the Sanctuary Hero. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've been pushing a, a lot for this kind of mechanic. It's really in, ter in terms of uh, how much I put uh, into uh, the, the new Sanctuary that we've seen with uh, Forbidden Wars. It's not as much as uh, the mechanic that is there uh, as... Um, that I like it as a player, but I like it as a game designer because it's kind of my baby, in a way. Because I I have not been uh, designing all the cards for for a while. I, I've been the the most uh, I, I've been put. Uh, let me rephrase that. Sorry, English is not my first language. Uh, let me rephrase that. Uh, what I I want to say is that uh, Forgotten Wars is the first series in which I had really both my hands deep down in in the the card creation. So. Uh, I had a lot more to do with uh, uh, a lot more card Forgotten mm -hmm. Wars. Sanctuary uh, is probably one of the factions that I, I uh, had the most uh, influence on. Right. So, out of all of the mechanics in the game, what would you consider your favorite? Um, evade. Oh. Yeah, that one's tricky. I like that one. Yeah, it's not really the best, but I think it's really cool because it's something that you understand really fast and it's just thematically it's really cool to have that on the, on the, the beastments. Mm -hmm. On the Rakshasa? On the Rakshasa. And we'll be showing uh, you viewers in chat um, some of the new cards that have just come out along with uh, the new mechanics that were introduced as well, so we'll take a look at that pretty soon here. Um, let's see here. So how do you test a balance in a game like Duel of Champions? Um, do you guys play tests a lot um, in the studio there? I know that there, you also have mentioned that you take feedback from the community. Like, what's your process behind balancing everything? There's a lot to deal with. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to deal with. Uh, usually we, uh, we get a bunch of players uh, together in, in a chat, and we just start chatting about random stuff and stuff that uh, one player says, okay, this card is probably going to be OP. And uh, we, we chat about it and we, we just uh, say why it's going to be o uh, overpowered. And someone tries to prove that it's it's going to be overpowered. Then someone tries to counter it. Because sometimes you have a card that's really strong, but if there's an answer for it, it's not that overpowered because there's a, an answer for it. 
Right. So it's really uh, a job of uh, saying, okay, this strategy might be too strong, but we have to check if there's uh, a way to defeat it, if, if there's kind of the rock, paper, scissor kind of combo. So mm -hmm. to do that, we have to do tournaments. And we do uh, VIP tournaments so with uh, the, the, the top players that I mentioned, with uh, the, the in-house tester. So we have a lot of work to do to, to get balance on, on, a, on a, a series like that. And it's really hard to do this fast because uh, whenever you change one card, you change a whole balancing. So uh, we have to be pretty intelligent about the changes that we do. But it's a hard job, but it's a fun job too. Mm -hmm. It's like everything is just always changing. And with that, how do you guys think up new mechanics? Like, do you just sort of put a bunch of stuff on a whiteboard and you're like, okay, well, this would be cool, this new expansion for this reason. Like, how do you think of all this? Uh, f um, it depends on, on how we approach the set, because uh, all of the expansion that we did so far ha did not have the same process. Mm -hmm. We uh, approach each set with an, uh, a new mindset just to see what works better. So in this case, we use a top-down uh, way to, to approach the, the, the design. Uh, top-down means that we uh, say, okay, we need something that's really uh, mirage or uh, really desert-oriented, and then we design st stuff from that. Uh, like the Evade uh, yeah. idea came from the fact that uh, we know that the Rakshasas are supposed to be really agile. So I said, why not do something that, that's evade? So uh, we kind of thought of uh, the, the abilities starting from uh, the theme of uh, the, the content of uh, Forgotten Wars. But sometimes we do the reverse. Sometimes we say we need something that takes care of the graveyard. So we came up with a, a creature that says the graveyard can, cannot be targeted while he was alive. So he ended up being the Crusader Chaplain. So that's bottom up design. But yeah, mainly the the this set was designed as top down with mm -hmm. some bottom up. For those who don't know uh, those, ter for those terms, this is a, a really important term in, in game design. And uh, yeah, uh, we don't we don't uh, really throw ideas to a, a whiteboard, but we throw them into an Excel file, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So last, last question I have. Then we the room and, and fight for uh, eight apples to see which which card survives. <laughs> we love Excel. We like understand. Them. Yes, we have lots of Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> um, so <laughs> last question for you. Um, what advice do you have, anyone, for someone who's looking to get into the gaming industry? I know we touched upon a couple of things earlier. Um, but yeah, if you could give anyone a couple of sentences. And what they can do. Uh, first, you, you you have to set yourself a goal of where you want to work, because mm -hmm. that is going to dictate pretty much how you're going to get uh, there. Because uh, in a studio like mine, you can work as a tester and go up the ranks, but some other studios don't have in-house testers, so you don't you can't go that route. So. Uh, if you have a studio in, in your city that's really uh, specialized in uh, online gaming, well, just study and stuff that, that's related to, to online, like an uh, online programmer or stuff like that. It's really about where you want to work uh, first. Mm -hmm. That's the most intelligent thing that you can do when, when, when you don't have anything uh, like in your back pocket, like experience. Uh, if you're not a graphical artist or something like that, just uh, base that on where you want to work, right? And, and you're going to find which kind of work you, you, you can. You have to study for if you mm -hmm. have to study for it. Because I haven't studied for uh, for uh, being a tester. Right. Just kind of went in and did it. And actually, I think that's really good advice because I've talked to quite a few people who are like, "Oh, it's my dream job to work in the gaming industry," and yet they have no clear idea of what exactly they want to do, like if they just want to do journalism or actually help design the games, you know, so excellent. And um, it looks like we actually have some winners! Codes! Yay! <laughs> and I think, let me, let me announce them, but I have to ask one really important question. I have, because I know you guys are in Quebec, right? Yeah. So I heard rumors that uh, poutine in Quebec is like the best. Is this true? 
It is. <laughs> it's <laughs> fast food. Fast food. <laughs> It's it, it's going to ruin your your uh, your uh, your yeah no no. <laughs> I love this one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from the West Coast, man. So the poutine thing when I when I got here, whoa, it was like it's powerful. I can only have like once a month. <laughs> I'd have it like every other day if I could. Every day. <laughs> no, 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 you wouldn't. <laughs> But there, there's one thing that uh, that has to be uh, mentioned about poutine is uh, it's the the the, uh, the the wannabe poutine. It's not gravy. Uh, oh, there's other yeah. places where you you go. It's it says th this is poutine. No, they they use a very particular gravy. It's, the, it's all about the gravy. It's all about the sauce. The sauce. sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about those cheese curds. Ooh. <laughs> I dream about it. I dream about poutine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Poutine OP. Yeah, it's so OP. <laughs> okay, so I think we got to announce some winners. So, first off, Facebook winners, we have a couple. So, I'll announce the Facebook winners and then I'll let Etta or Pixel announce the Twitter winners. Sure. <laughs> there's a lot of them. But so, for Facebook, congrats to Lobo KTJ. Um, here's a name I'm about to butcher Miss <laughs> Londias Ill. That's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, intense name. And then Crossman. So you guys were already messaged with codes on Facebook. So go check. Be excited. We made it easy for you to win. All you have to do is share some social media. And we're going to be going over that again in a second. So Pixel, who won on Twitter? All right. We've got a ton of you guys. So uh, Nix Rose is one of them. I recognize that name. Congrats, girl. Uh, underscore Pink C. Ashley Ketchum. I also recognize you. Thank you for sharing our stream. We've got Death underscore Reaper. Death my boy. <laughs> Yeah, um, that blind bandit, fragged D, mouth the one. Uh, so all of you guys, you just need to go ahead and follow the Fragdolls account if you're not already, so that um, Spectra can go ahead and DM you your codes. And so real quick, so we're going to be giving away more codes. I feel like Chase just threw hundreds of codes at us and was like, please. It's raining codes. Yeah, he just, he just <laughs> dropped them on us. Like, it was just, I was, I was af afraid. By how many codes he gave us. I should get like a, should get like a code cannon. <laughs> right? <laughs> aim it this way, Chase. Aim it, aim it this way. Yeah. <laughs> damn, damn. <laughs> so I know we just had some social media pop up on the Fragdolls social media channels on Twitter and Facebook. So Facebook.com slash Fragdolls and Twitter.com slash Fragdolls. Hop over there, share, retweet, and you'll be entered in to win even more codes. Some brand prize codes. Yeah. Dope. Or, yep, super dope. And then also we have two special grand prize codes that we're going to be giving out today. So if you share any of our social media today, you will be entered in to win. And so I'm kind of hoping, just, can, we, can we win those two, Pixel? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's good to know. So be sure to share. We want you to win. We want you to be pumped up for Duels of Champions. And then also, we want you to go download Duels of Champions right now. Free to play, DuelChampions.com. Get started and challenge Saber, our devs, and Mr. Chase, a.k.a. Pandar. So, it's up. It's up. work right now. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is that? I mean, that? not really. <laughs> I'm playing against uh, Red Deck Rush, and he's just uh, he's crushing me a little bit. What well, trying to stabilize. We'll be used to that by now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so why don't we talk a little bit about what we're actually seeing on stream right now? So I think I think some of us are checking it out, right? Like they're, we're all watching Saber play right now. Yep, looks like she has some uh, new academy cards up there. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I wonder if she has a favorite favorite card she's digging on so far. She's probably in the zone, and here we are harassing her about <laughs> her uh, her playing, and so she's actually playing against a. Inferno deck right now. So, in terms of balance, how do you guys feel like, um, like the cards kind of match up from Forgotten Wars? And how does it kind of like change the balance right now for Duels of Champions? Do you think a lot of people are really favoring the cards, maybe? Yeah, oh my god, uh, it's hard to say, right? But yeah, 
when we started the Forgotten Wars, we knew that uh, uh, Haven and Sanctuary were kind of a bit behind in terms of uh, the quantity of good cards that they could use to, to create good decks. So we knew that we we sh we couldn't mi miss the mark on, on those two factions. And in terms of Necro and Inferno, those two factions were really, really good um, at, at the moment uh, where we started uh, designing uh, uh, for Game of Wars. So that's not to say that we wanted uh, to give uh, th those factions bad cards. It's just that we wanted to give, uh, give them something different. And I, I think we actually did that. But uh, we didn't want uh, to give even more tools to the existing decks so that they could be uh, they they could pull far up uh, ahead and uh, uh, make it impossible for other factions to catch up. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also designed the solutions for uh, the, the good strategies to make sure that every faction could uh, try to catch up to to, to those factions. And uh, made uh, uh, removal cards like uh, that destroys ongoings and uh, creatures a bit more accessible to all factions. So that's how we approached uh, the uh, the balancing, just to try to level uh, things up with all the factions. Um, there's a lot of people that are uh, trying to convince us to 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 take, make cards that are really not good right now mm -hmm. better. It's uh, considering the workload that we have right now, just modifying some cards that already exist is uh, a lot of work that to put on top of uh, the, the rest that we already have to do to, to get the new cards out. So what we try to do is um, make cards better by the presence of other cards. Mm -hmm. So like uh, there's uh, Takana, uh, a hero that's really good with honor. We created a card that gives honor. So Takana becomes better because of uh, a new card. Mm. And so I know we have a question from chat. It's our first one. Are you guys excited? Yay! Yay! I think, I think only Pixel and I are excited. You guys I'm are so serious. <laughs> 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 okay, so this question is from Trey102000. He asks, what, are your, what is your inspiration for the Academy faction? Did you guys kind of want a control-heavy archetype to exist? Or did you design it for completely different reasons? Um, we kind of designed it as a, a fashion that was going to be complex from the start. Because we knew that uh, it was going to be a, a faction that was based on combos or uh, maybe a, a different style of play that's not really easy to achieve. So we said we started out by uh, saying maybe that, that fashion can, can do pretty much everything. But at a cost. So we uh, designed, uh, we started uh, designing uh, ways uh, so that the defense uh, part of Academy was kind of uneasy. It's hard to defend uh, in Academy because of creatures like Phase. They're not counting as cards that blocks. Evade is not something that you really control. Uh, uh, you have a lot of HP, but you don't have. Uh, you have to, to take care of uh, your level ups uh, carefully to be able to set up yourself for a good defense. So it's kind of a, an uneasy way to play, but you could do possibly anything with, with that faction. So that was a mindset w that we had uh, with uh, uh, creating Academy. Mm -hmm. And does everyone in here, I'm sure everyone has a favorite hero, right? I think it's something that all oh, of you yeah. guys can answer. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hard question, I know. There's so many, and they're all so good, so it's really mm. hard to kind of decide. So, mm. I'm gonna say Kelthor. He's riding a black panther. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <Primal. laughs> That's badass. No, I just like his ability too. I love his ability. That's an that's an intense answer. So he's riding a black panther. <laughs> Yeah, I think if we were going, like, just card art alone, the Demiria Caller of Madness is a pretty sweet hero. Yeah, right there. Inferno? Yeah. I, w I, I like wonder why. What? <laughs> Certain assets, maybe? Oh, dude, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Chase. I would just... I would just say that. The card oh, art pops a It's her wings. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it pops. It's her horns. I like the horns. Totally. Horns, yes. Fierce set of horns. 
Nergal is also pretty sweet. I don't like playing him as much because I don't like the schools of magic that he uses, but he's just like sitting up. He's like got some Game of Thrones thing going on up in his, uh, up in his throne. It's pretty vicious. Mm-hmm. And uh, Simon, who's your who's your favorite hero? Uh, hard to say, but uh, I would have to go with Krakak. <laughs> Why? Why? I, I, uh, if uh, I, I want to go aggressive, I want to go aggressive with really underdog creatures like Serpent Fly. Mm-hmm. I, I, I created a mean, 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 mean rush deck with Serpent Flies. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, the, the goal was to say, if you don't kill my circle flies, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the, the, probably the weakest card ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Esper, do you have a favorite? I want to know. Oh, it's really hard to pick, because there's so many. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of feeling, uh, oh, it's maybe, like, in terms of, like, art, I really like Cassandra. I think she's really, I think she's pretty. Um, but, oh, it's really, because I kind of have, I have four decks, I think, right now. So <laughs> it's kind of hard. Oh to, like, you just love them all. Yeah. <laughs> I, they I, all get I, equal attention. You know, <laughs> I, I play a Grot a lot, even though he's like, you know, just like the one you start with, with mm-hmm. Inferno. But um, I just. done with you from the beginning, yes. right? Like, yeah. It's a special place <laughs> in my heart. Um, <laughs> Kalazar is like super good. I just really like, you know, the aggressive play style. So with him, I can kind of like, you know, um, get rid of things in my way. Kind of, mm-hmm. kind of get a little AA aggressive on, mm-hmm. on my opponents. Um, how about you, Pixel? Do you have a favorite? So you guys are gonna have to correct me on pronunciation. Is it Akane or is it Akane? Can't. Akane. 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 Okay, cool. So I was right. Yeah, she is my favorite because I absolutely love taking back spells from my graveyard, getting them back, <laughs> and then blasting my opponent in the face. It is so great. So, yeah, thank you for making that card. It's fabulous. <laughs> so Pixel is cruel. I am a mean person. Yeah. You don't have your opponent's <laughs> best interest in mind, right? Like mm. that's not so much. Exactly. So, if you guys do, you guys have like a favorite deck that you maybe play with. You can just tell us a little bit about like the play style for that deck. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because because I like the Kelter Hero, I have to say a spell for deck. So just uh, just just bring my just bring my Kelter up to like a three magic, and no fortune. Oh well, except for just uh, you get the one fortune with the um, the killing one called again. Anyways, so play like a five or six three one. And um, it's just fun because uh, because you can uh, you can use his ability to uh, get surprise and and plus there's so many powerful big strong stronghold character uh, creatures. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm liking Sanctuary a lot more. And I'm, I'm gonna try and get into a lot more. Um, mm. But okay, for now, yeah, I'll just say spell. Yeah, there's too many. <laughs> I'll just go. Such variety, but that's a good thing, right? <laughs> like you want variety it, in a card game. Well, uh, I created the, for, for this event, I created a really cool deck. It's not my creation, it's uh, one of the VIP's creation, but I love the, this kind of play, which oh, is, uh, uh, no, the other deck, uh, the Inferno deck, uh, which is, the goal is to put in play an Abyssal, an Abyssal board or Abyssal Worm on turn three. Then four, then five, then six. So it's really aggressive because you put out a lot of big creatures and they, they stay in play. And it's really, really, really cool. Just to, I would like to, to have a webcam just to see the face of the guy that gets the <laughs> episode warm on turn three. You should make that a new feature. <laughs> yes, please add a webcam feature. No. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, don't. I don't think that's. Mm. No. <laughs> that can get really weird. Voice chat, maybe? No, oh, no. Man. <laughs> oh, no, please, no. <laughs> Pander, do you have a favorite uh, deck that you're playing right now? Um, yeah, probably the Sanctuary. I'm just, like, starting to, to get into it and, like, trying to build a good honor deck with the uh, Takana Sore um, hero, which gives friendly creatures with honor get plus one attack. Um, so that's been fun, but I've been trying to figure it all out. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a deck building is very intense, I find, in a lot of ways. I know there's a lot of resources you can actually use online to find deck lists. Um, mmdoc.net is one I know a lot yeah, of set up, right? Yeah. mmdoc.net is the business. And there's uh, they've got a chat room in there, 
too. So like a lot of the super hardcore players are always in there that if you want to go in and like ask them questions and stuff like that. Mm. And the community is super nice. I know it's a very um, international community, yes. which I think is fantastic because you get like a really wide variety of play styles and like the meta is a lot harder to kind of like, kind of, you know, set on. But let's Speaking see. of international, uh, we have a couple of questions in chat. Chase, would you happen to know if the codes that we're giving out also work in other regions? I don't um, think they are U.S. only in lock, are they? I don't, I don't think so, but there's always, like, sometimes we get issues with people saying that they can't use right. them, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure. So right, I would just say so. try them, but, I mean, if mm. it, yeah. So I have a really, I have a very important question. I know this is uh, maybe along the lines of the uh, poutine question we uh, experienced okay. earlier. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm curious, do you guys, uh, do you guys talk trash when you, when you play games? Oh, and oh yeah. You... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have, do you have some like dual champion themed trash talk you might you might use more often than other ones? <laughs> Not that much, but often uh, at, at the end of a day or something like that, there is there is uh, two guys in the team that are just challenging each other, and you end up having like four guys, but uh, just watching the game on, on one uh, one guy's uh, station, and then you turn around and you see that there's all, also four guys watching the other the other guy's game other guy's game so it's really uh it's not really trash talking it's just oh you're going to beat him what the, do, do that do this do this <laughs> no you gotta go up in a we way gotta, we, we gotta get you guys like a cam of like um because one of our one of our designers he's been on a couple of shows jared pearson um he, he always um he plays against one of our of our uh action script programmers uh jonathan what and then those guys trash talk like oh so, yeah, yeah. Like, it's so funny. I, we're gonna try. You know what? Let's do that. Let's just do like a secret, like cam and cam and thing. That could be, be a great be, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> John is uh, surely watching this team right now. Oh, is he? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, no. You have to wait like a week now before you set up that secret creep creep cam. So yeah, we won't see it coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a total creep like, cam. Oh dear, you know, it's just gonna. Be uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Should we in that the creep stream? The creep stream? Just have it. Just have it playing on Twitch. <laughs> oh so no! I have, I have a random question. Uh, do you guys foresee any changes um, coming up and being made to like the deck editor? Um, like maybe the ability to like export a deck list and like re-import it for someone else to play with that sort of thing. Um, you have to remember that we are free to play, right. and so we are going to be online for a while. Mm. We don't plan to go offline in a year. We we we're going to go to be uh, live for us as as, uh, as long as we can. So yes, we are going to change pretty much everything in the game in the, a set uh, duration. Uh, like in in two years, pretty much everything in the game would would have changed. Mm -hmm. If we could, uh, it all depends on uh, what the player needs. It's all right. It all depends also on, on our success. Uh, as a designer, I want to change pretty much everything in the game just to make sure that it's better. <laughs> but mm -hmm. It's not always what can happen. It's, it's just uh, it's dictated by uh, what we need uh, if we have time, because uh, uh, we also have to fix bugs. We also have to make sure to. to uh, maybe uh, do versions for an uh, iPad or something like that, so it eats up on the time that we have to design new features. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say new features, it includes uh, redoing something that's al already been done, been done, because usually it means to develop new, new stuff, new tools. Mm -hmm. So yes, the design, the, 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 the design for the new deck builder is kind of somewhere on, on our uh, uh, Network, but I don't know where we're going right. to do. It's just, it's ready. We have ideas. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So one day. <laughs> one day. And okay. so, the answer for these kind of question is not no. We're not going to do it. It's probably mm -hmm. one day we're going to do it. But yeah, nothing okay. official. So I know we have a question for our art director Dan. 
So Dark Secrets Zero Zero wants to know, um, did you get your art degree before, or are, are you just that talented, like that they were like, man, he is that It's all, it's all pure skills. <laughs> 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 um, I did, I didn't, although I finished my degree, I got, I, I did my diploma for fine arts, mm -hmm. and then, um, uh, like the, the, the digital arts and the 3D program that I took was, was like super intense, so it's kind of a, a it, it, a lot of it was just, um, Kind of like learning it on your own and and um, and uh, working at working at the craft of of art, whether it's digital, whether it's three, whether it's sculpting, something like that. Um, and then a lot of it again was also in in production. So, and actually that's probably where I, I gotta say I learned the most stuff is in production. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and just so you guys know in chat, if the codes are not working, it's because someone probably already grabbed it before you. But just so you guys know, we have a lot of opportunities for you to get codes. Uh, Pixel, do you want to tell them a little bit more about how they can win awesomeness? Of course. Of course. All right. So go ahead and log on to Facebook or Twitter. Um, go to twitter.com backslash fagdolls or facebook.com backslash fagdolls or forward slash fagdolls. Apparently, I've been saying that wrong this entire time. Wait, forward slash? <laughs> Forward slash, it forward. blew my mind. Oh. Let me tell you guys how much forward slash and backslash and me getting them mixed up for like a few years just blew my mind. Oh, just but anyway, <laughs> all you have to do is go to our social media and go ahead and retweet or share um, the respective posts and that will get you entered to either win one of the codes that we're also dropping in chat and you can also win a grand prize package, which has a ton of goodies for you guys to unlock some new packs for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And then just mm -hmm. so you guys know, while you're watching, if you want to challenge our devs, um, we have them playing right now. They're actually on the iPad because Dual Champions is available on PC and iPad. You can actually challenge them right now and talk a little trash. You know, if you defeat them, that's fine. <laughs> and then we have Saber. Yep, see, they're playing right now. You can see live in action playing right now. And we also have Saber playing. That's the game player checking out right now on stream. And then we also have uh, Mr. Pandar, a.k.a. Chase, um, playing as well. So we'll write all their names in chat so you can add them and, you know, um, maybe defeat them, maybe maybe get defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's a game of skill, so so who knows how that's going <laughs> to work for you. But I think it's time for us to harass Mr. Chase with some questions. Hey, Pandar. Hey, okay, what's Electric up? Panda. Hey, what's up? What's up? Not hey. Panda. Not Panda. Yeah, Panda. Okay, so real quick, Chase, who are you? What do you do? Um, so I'm just like this guy, you know. Uh, <laughs> I am Chase. <laughs> I am a player experience manager at Ubisoft. Um, for Duel of Champions, I mostly um, focus on the esports. So. Um, coming up with the, the road to Paris and sort of uh, building that whole thing out, getting it off the ground and um, running it through throughout the year. Um, my job in general, I mean, I guess so I wear like a lot of different hats. Um, we're sort of like content producers um, and strategists. Uh, so it depends on like what game I'm working on. It's just, it's, it's really different on a lot of different things. Hold on, sorry, my turn is running out. Your what is running out? Your turn? My turn. Yeah. Oh, no, it's going to get beat up. I know. Stuff is getting... It's okay. No, at least no, no, now no. you can use us distracting you as an excuse for being Yeah. Like, oh, I was totally going to win, but then the fragments are <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> so enjoy that one, buddy. Um, I can still win. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like in a, in a nutshell what I, what I do. Cool. Well, okay, so what's your background? Like, where'd you go to school? How'd you get into the gaming industry? How'd you start with Ubisoft? Um, with your life? So, yeah, let me tell you about my next <laughs> um, So I, I sort of just fell into it. You know, I went to school. I went to the University of Utah um, studying, oh, jeez, oh, that was bad, uh, mass communication. Um, I was going to be a music journalist, uh, and then I sort of, I just got a job offer um, sort of randomly, like people that I had met while I was doing a story, like writing for an arts and entertainment magazine. Um, and I started working at this company that was like a game services agency. 
Um, so it would basically be like uh, companies that need you know, community managers and moderators and customer support people. We were sort of like an outsourced team. Um, and so I worked in-house at different clients um, as like an in-house community manager um, for them. And I did that for about three years before being recruited by Ubisoft to come out to San Francisco and work for them. Mm-hmm. So what is your favorite thing about working on Duels of Champions? Um... Man, there are so many favorite things about working on Duel of Champions. I had, I think, the Duel of Champions is the favorite, my favorite game that I've ever worked on in my, in my, uh, in my career thus far. I think it's, I think a, it's just because it's a fantastic game. Um, like it's just a really fun game to play. And so when you're when you're like passionate about a product and you have a really great product to work on, it makes working on it a thousand times better. Um, so you can actually like do a lot of fun things with it, like um, like Road to Paris. The we we wouldn't be able to put something like Road to Paris together if we didn't have um, a large fan base that wanted to play and was like very serious about that. If you have a game that's like so so and you try to do you know an esports competition around it, people aren't going to care that much. But instead, we have people who are super serious about it, you know, and, and really get involved. And I think that. I think that that's really cool. Um, and also, you know, I, uh, another thing I like about it is, you know, I think Dan was saying before, there's a lot of creative flexibility. Um, you know, we we sort of, like, joke around that we are, like, an indie game at Ubisoft um, because you don't have, you know, there's not, we're not, like, confined by a lot of, like, branding things. Um and also, it's, it's like, super DIY. So it's, like, if somebody has an idea for something cool that they want to do, um, they can pretty much just go do it, which mm-hmm. which is rare. Like, you don't you don't see that on a lot of games. So I think there's there's just so much we can do with it that we have a great product. But, yeah, it's a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, on, on that note, Chase, you're talking about, it's one thing I forgot to mention, because this is the first kind of game that I worked on that has so much um, engagement with the, the players and the community. Um, you know, in other games you work on, AAA games, whatever, action games, you never really get to, you never really get to see how the consumers, like, or, I mean, the players react or, or, or play with your team. Whereas with this, I mean, like, the thing we're doing right now, having this live stream and having some of the players play with us while we talk about it, um, and then having this whole community thing about it, around it, that's, it's pretty new, it's different for, for me, at least that, from what, compared to the other developments that I've ever done. Um, but at the same time, it's it's really it's it's a lot of fun. It is really cool. I feel like I feel like there's a lot of um, oh, forgive me for using this word, but synergy. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! <That's> <laughs> between between uh, between the community and uh, and the dev team, um, they kind of like work really uh, hand in hand. I mean, I know that there's the um, uh, the card balancing team stuff like that that's all just like super hardcore VIP people um, who, who have played it. Um, we're, we're taking sort of like a slow growth approach to building the community. It's not just, you know, trying to get a ton of people off the bat to play. You know, it's about slowly growing and building those relationships and bringing them a product that they can really get behind. Yeah, and so I think it's really cool too that like people seem to really appreciate the fact that they do get that like one-on-one interaction with you guys. It's more of like a two-way street at that point than like, you know, developers pushing something out into the universe and then just kind of standing back from it. Um, and, yeah, yeah and, and it's super cool because it's a game, like, you know, as far as, you know, any game has to make money to stay to stay alive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you see on other games, you know, that are like, that are okay games where there's like a push to, oh, you know, we have to, we have to monetize on this. And, and there's so much focus on um, on sales that you sort of lose the fun aspect of it. And you know, obviously, while we still have to do everything we can to keep the game afloat, um, it kind of takes care of that itself, just because it's fun. So you, can, you get to focus more on like how can we provide a fun, engaging experience to people, rather than like you know, oh, we have to like push this, you know. So I think that that's I think that that's really cool and rare. Mm-hmm. So, here's an interesting question from one of our regular viewers. Um, I know that we've had Chase on our live streams quite, <laughs> quite a bit, and, you know, we've all witnessed, like, the evolution of uh, yourself and the way you appear. 
This question is, Chase, <laughs> tell us about your mustaches throughout your life. So what are you rocking today, Chase? <laughs> oh, the, mu <laughs> 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 the mustaches throughout my life. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I hang out with my friend the mustache every now and then. Um, I think the last <laughs> the last one was uh, a few months ago, which you guys were, were witness to that mustache. Um, it was displayed at, what was it? Origins. Was it? Yeah, <laughs> Origins was the last appearance of the mustache. Um, but, you know, it pops up every now and then. You know, it mm -hmm. just sort of, it, it's never really planned. Um, <laughs> Thank God. I know. <laughs> Well, I think the real, I think the first time the mustache like made a serious appearance was probably back in college, and I was actually working as a waiter at a country club, <laughs> and and it was a mustache march, and uh, and it actually only lasted for about a week because I felt too guilty waiting tables with the mustache when I would see parents like hold on to their kids a little bit oh, tighter no. around. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he pops mm. up. Do you have a name for your mustache? <laughs> no, but I probably should. It's, yeah. not that, it's not that great of a mustache. I just look extra creepy when I have it. Yep. <laughs> you got to for it. You got to hit us with a name next time you have a, your sports mm. stuff. Yeah. We, we need to come up with, um, with like a card name. So it would be like a Duel of Champions card. It would be like Leonardo, Destroyer of Dreams. <laughs> and it's just your mustache? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably be super <laughs> <laughs> oh no okay so um i know we talked a little bit about the road to paris but how do you see uh doc comparing to other games as a competitive esports i know you did a little bit of talking um during the next level at pax and so you, i know you showed off some awesomeness there with them so how do you how do you see it like kind of growing as an esport um well, how does it compare or kind of kind of both kind of take it where you want to go like um well okay so as far as as far as comparing um you know one thing about uh about the game that you know when i was first getting involved with it you know my thought was um is this something that would be interesting for people to watch right you know because esports it's not only about the competition but it's about the spectating too um, you know, people follow, like, their favorite players, and they want to see, you know, how they play, how they build decks. Um, and I was actually, you know, really surprised at how engaging it is to, to watch some of these games. And we also have some really great casters, too. So the Road to Paris community manager, um, Jason Paradise, uh, he does a fantastic job calling games. Uh, another community manager um, in France, uh, James, or Aza 404 in game just like phenomenal commentary and we also have a bunch of like really great uh people in the community like in Clays and uh Trixius has been doing it so I, I think you know the personalities that we have in the game and then um like the gameplay itself it's actually really fun to watch and see what people come up with and you know the combos they pull and the way that they choose to build their decks um as far as where I see it going um you know, competition is really important to us. It's something that we put a premium on, and I think I think that you know, Road to Paris this year. It's I mean, last year the World Championship was something that was like run out of the forums, right? You know, there was maybe like 120 something people um, playing, and it was all you know organized on the forums. This year, you know, we finally built out the website. We have a bunch of game to web stuff where people can sign up for the online qualifiers, and like their stats come online, and they can like see where they are against other people. Um, we've been doing a lot of uh, recorded games, so mostly we're really taking game game replays and commentating over them. Um, pretty soon, we're going to have spectator mode available. Well, I don't, I don't want to say pretty soon, because um, but at some, some point, point. Then, yeah, in the near future, um, we have we have like a working um, kind of beginner thing of it. It just needs to be improved a little bit before we can start using it um, on a regular basis. But once that comes, I mean, that's going to be video content and streaming is huge for us, so that's going to be really big for gaming. Um, and I think that I think that we're just going to keep, you know, building it, uh, building it up, you know, taking things to the to the next level. I'd really love to see, you know, I'm, and I'm just speculating here because we haven't even sat down to talk about um, DOC Esports for 2014 yet. But I would love to see um, kind of like league-ish competition, not like the not like the game, but like having like 
games and like tiers and stuff that people can uh, can play in and like their regions having it um, extended longer um, and having even bigger and better prizes. So it's yeah, I think it's something that you'll see a lot of growth from. Awesome. And now I think it's time, the time that everyone has been waiting for. I think we need to discuss maybe some of the new mechanics and some of the new cards we yeah. see in Dual Champions. Yes. Excellent. And so I know we can talk about, um, I think the new mechanics are definitely really interesting because they kind of really change the gameplay up quite a bit. You have to be kind of a little bit more careful about uh, positioning, I think, especially mm -hmm. with some of these. So I think the first card we're going to talk about is Surging Titan. So I'm wondering, I think we might having it pop up on screen. If not, we can go there over. There it is. Is it up there? <gasps> yeah. Is he? It's is he a surging Titan in his all his glory. I love that guy. Uh -oh. And I love making copies of that guy in my deck. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my card. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yeah, I do. Draw that? Oh, cool. Yeah, high five. So, so awesome. we, we picked the right cards, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so can we talk about a little bit about the mechanic Shockwave. Can someone describe real quick what Shockwave exactly does? Or or I can do it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, sorry, I, I was answering like a four. Simon, Simon was too busy uh, <laughs> in a smackdown on someone over there. <laughs> Simon's in the zone. I just beat someone and uh, right, wrote GG to someone else. Oh. <laughs> That's what happens when I bad. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I really love that card, and uh, w when we designed it, uh, it was much less of a wrecking ball, but as, at some point we just said it was worth it uh, having an epic that just felt like it was going to to just wreck the, the, uh, the opponent's board, mm -hmm. and just be a, a card that has no drawback. Uh, well, except for its requirements, but it was the goal was to have something that's really dangerous in any case. Mm -hmm. I think you guys did a really good job of that too, because when I opened this up in one of my packs, I looked at it and I was like, "Damn!" Like I can feel this like Titan just like smashing the ground and then exploding all of the little like little creatures that are surrounding <laughs> that point. And I was like, "This is this this is awesome. This needs to go in my deck right now. Done." <laughs> So can you describe maybe a little bit about how Shockwave can really ruin your opponent's day? Maybe a little bit? <laughs> uh, well, people tend to uh, deploy in a zigzag formation. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're always trying to uh, evade the sweep attack and fireball. So we wanted to throw a wrench in that uh, mentality. So to, to make people aware that y you have to take into account every kind of deck you, you're, you're fighting. So if you're fighting uh, against Academy, you have to deploy in one way. If you're fighting against Inferno, you have to deploy in another way. So that was the idea be behind uh, Shockwave, to make it so that it's you're going to, to, to play differently depending on, who, on whom you're playing against. Okay, so now let's check out another card. So I think the next card we're going to check out is Dancing Dervish. And I definitely really like the card art on Dancing Dervish. She, she seems a little, uh, she seems sassy. Yeah. Right? Like, kind of Xena Warrior Princess-ish, I guess, wearing that, wearing that leather, you know. <laughs> and so she features um, the new mechanic Range Reflect. And so, mm -hmm. tell us how Range Reflect kind of influences the gameplay a little bit. Um, well, right now, the, the shooters are uh, really the, the one type of creature that doesn't have anything against them, ex except for cards that are not played anyways. So, uh, for example, uh, Windshield, who plays that? So, we wanted to have uh, uh, an ability that plays against uh, range, uh, range creatures. And uh, in another way, it, it complements with uh, the evade uh, ability to, that we have on Rakshasas. So we have uh, the, the evade that uh, interacts with fires and melees, and this one interacts with shooters. So Academy has a way to deal with any kind of uh, creatures, to include a lot of uh, creatures here and there to, to be able to cover everything. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now I think we're ready for, uh, I know I love this word, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I really, I really like that name choice. That it was really, I really can't wait to see that name being utilized in a like a really competitive esports stream. You know, like like Rakasha for the win. You know, like yeah. really like super into it. <laughs> well, they're just going to uh, say the rack. Rack. Oh, that's not uh, That's that's not as fun though. Yeah. No. <laughs> but it's sport. Sometimes it's... <laughs> yeah, they're just like... Oh, yeah. Rare. Okay, Rare. And, <laughs> and so the mechanic we're seeing um, is evade. So how does evade kind of affect everything, you think? Oh, uh, well, it affects... In a way, you don't... You don't really know how it's going to affect until your opponent attacks, because it, it's... Um, it's triggered uh, whenever you have uh, a space that's left for uh, for that creature to move, uh, but you don't know where that creature is going to get because it's uh, it's kind of a wild animal that's go just going to defend you uh, at any cost, but you're not choosing where it goes. So it's kind of uh, a defense that you're not completely controlling, but it's a really good defense when you think about it because it's preventing damage, it's preventing the attack. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a really good uh, way to defend yourself, but you have to take into account that you don't know where that creature is going to go when when uh, when he, it evades. Okay, so now let's hop over to um, this mechanic. I'm really into phased. I really like aggressive play styles, and I feel like phased is really interesting. And so we're going to be checking out the wizard apprentice. And the other awesome thing about this is he can attack anywhere. Yes. So I love yeah. that. Because mm -hmm. he's kind of like, hey, yeah, actually, I'm not going to go for you. I'm going to go for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, surprise, you know, your opponent. So how does phase work? Like, how does it, how does it work, do you think, in terms of maybe even competitive gameplay? Um, not sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I know that th this is a really cool ability to have on, on, the, on the Wizards. It's, it really t ties into the fact that uh, you have a, a defense that you're not really controlling. It takes up a spot in, in your back row uh, that you can't use as a blocker. But if you're really aggressive, you don't care. Because w when you're playing aggressive, you don't mind taking damage. You, you just want to deal damage yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the wizards that have uh, uh, attack, uh, that have face, they are really aggressive. They have either attack anywhere or uh, area blast. Uh, they're really focused on attack, mm -hmm. but they're, they they cannot be used as defense. Also, you have to take into account that those creatures cannot be attacked, so you have to to deal with them with spells. So, it's a funky way to defend yourself, to or to prepare yourself for battle. Mm. Okay, and so then the final card that we're going to check out with the um, final new mechanic is Se Seyama Stalker. I think that's how you say it. Seyama. And Seyama. And so this is going to be featuring the mechanic Ambush. And um, Ambush is definitely a... I feel like that would probably drive me insane if I was playing and I got, I got creature ambushed. So can you tell us a little bit about Ambush? Yeah, Ambush uh, was... Uh Kind of one of the, the, the mechanics that we had that was uh, designed top down. We wanted to have a feeling where the the, the nagas and the, the the orcs are the master of the des desert, so they know the the place in and out. So if you wander into their territory, you're going to get ambushed. There, they they cannot have a really big army in, in the desert. So it's really uh, about guerrilla warfare or. Uh, ambushes uh, like you see in the, in the in the desert so we came up with something that triggers when when you you go in, in front of them which uh, which is uh, the gameplay mechanic that felt the most ambushy <laughs> surprise and, hey yeah, new world. <laughs> yeah uh, so it fits really with uh, both faction being uh, being stuck in the desert okay and so now, let's actually go back to Wizard Apprentice real quick. Um, Dark Secret Zero Zero actually had a good question. Um, he wants to know, uh, why does this card have retaliation if it has phase? 
Are there any combos that where that would like be something that would be beneficial? There's two answers to that. The first mm -hmm. answer is maybe at some point there's going to be a card that uh, that shifts uh, the, those two stats uh, between each other, like El Red's blessing that are that is referencing the the retaliation. There's always a way to get that stack uh, to to be useful. Mm -hmm. uh, the other reason is that guy is supposed to be a uh, combat efficient. So just to represent that the, the the fact that this guy is combat efficient is to put. Right, retaliation on the guy, even if it's just aesthetical. Mm -hmm. If even if it's not used, it's just a way to say that this guy, even even if he he's faced, he's prepared to retaliate. All right, there you go. There's your answer. Yeah. So a lot of really great mechanics, and of course we have the new faction. And I know you guys are super pumped about Forgotten mm -hmm. Wars being. Really. So, can you guys maybe give us a little bit information about like the flavor of Forgotten Wars? Maybe like the story. Uh, maybe just a hint, hint of it, a little bit. A hint of the story. Only. Like you know, you know, like the flavor, <laughs> like how, yeah, like a teaser, like to get people interested. In, you know, the game's free to play. Dual Champions is free to play. You can go download it right now, check it out, and maybe get your hands on some Forgotten Wars cards if you you play. So I, want, I want a little temptation. What would you guys say? would be the best way to describe Forgotten Wars. Well, story-wise, the Academy is pretty much the, the, the faction that, had, that affected the world the most. They, they created the, the Orcs, they created the Necromancers, they created pretty much everything that uh, you see on Ashan. They created the Beastmen, uh, they created a lot of things. So if you want to play those guys that created pretty much everything, well, there you go. Mm. If you want to have more inf information, you could check also the, the trailer uh, that w that has been shown at the beginning of the, the stream. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to be showing it again. No worries. So they'll, they'll get a chance to check it out. And now I think it's time for maybe the Altar of Wishes. I don't know if we have... I think we have Saber playing right now, but it's a, it's looking pretty pretty hard for her right now. The oh, no! It's not that good for her. A lot oh. of uh, Inferno. Only one HP. Yeah, only one HP, and then, <laughs> then we'll be able to check out <laughs> a little bit about uh, about the Altar of Wishes, because I know um, it's a great way for new players to receive cards that they might need. For example, does uh, Chase, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Altar of Wishes? Yeah, so the Altar of Wishes is pretty sweet. Um, you know, we've had this thing for, for a long time, of how, you know, as a player, I want to be able to get um, a specific kind of card, right? Like, uh, usually there's, you know, maybe one or two, like, missing cards from your deck that you're, that you're trying to get. And until the Altar of Wishes, there wasn't really a way to get that exact card. You would just have to keep getting booster packs and, um, you know, and hope for the best. The Altar of Wishes allows you to do that. So basically what happens is when you get um, packs in the game, you will get um, like a certain number of wild cards every time you get like a box set or a booster pack. And then the altar of wishes is you go through and it lists every single card in the game. And you put it on the altar of wishes and it'll tell you um, how many wild cards it costs to, to buy that card. And if you have enough um, wild cards, then you can get that specific card. And that's that's basically the gist of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's really really awesome. So if you're kind of like stuck and you're really really hunting for that one card, to really yeah finish exactly up your deck. yeah you want like another dark assassin or you know a unique creature or a, you know a certain hero or something like that. That's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And before we show off the altar of wishes in stream, we're still hanging out right now. I don't understand how this yeah, is happening. Yeah, I she's just she's just stable. She's stabilized. You know, it's pretty crazy how these games can go really back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like if she pulls this one out and wins, I'll be I'll be pretty impressed. But while we're waiting for her to finish that battle, we're going to talk about winners, right? We love winners. winners. Yay. So, real quick, we've been doing some social media share contests, retweets, etc. So, facebook.com backslash forward slash forward slash yeah. gosh darn it <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash fragdolls or Twitter.com forward slash fragdolls. Um, we, we've been having some winners um, picked out. So Facebook winners, you have been messaged codes, so be sure to check your other folder. And so we have Sam Garbin, Christina Migliara, Jacko Melcher. So be sure to check 
your your other messages. I know we're going to be um, doing some more giveaways. I, I don't know why Chase hooks up with so many codes. He must just love you guys, right? Yeah. I don't That's have exactly any. what it is. <laughs> Dan doesn't have any codes, though. Yeah. Oh, Dan, I'll hook you up, dog. Don't. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, we know that you made the cards, but you're going to have to pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I know I dropped some surprise. I'll be dropping surprise codes randomly um, in pretty big chunks on either Facebook and Twitter, probably throughout the day as well. So if you didn't get your hands on any of them in the chat, because I know people are super quick about these codes. They are so quick. I don't even understand. Like, you guys are just, like, insane. Yeah. For like, minutes. rare, speedy. Like, they're getting a rakasha on those codes, right? <laughs> yeah. Rakasha. Rakasha. And then uh, be sure to also follow Duel of Champions on Twitter and Facebook. I know we have their information on stream. So you want to holler at them to um, give them some love because they love you. They love hearing what you guys have to say about the game. And they're excited that you're passionate about it as well. Right, guys? Totally. Yes. Yes. And I think Absolutely. another really good resource for Duel of Champions is actually the Duel of Champions Reddit, um, which is just slash r slash Duel of Champions. So make sure you check that out. You can tell Chase how awesome you think the... Uh, we only we only think about positive we're, things. We're making, <laughs> making improvements to it. It's, it's a work progress, but it doesn't look too bad. It's, except I don't want to hear what Dan's thoughts are. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. used a what font color? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And I don't know if you're going to change it to make everything in Comic Sans, I think. Oh, no, to don't. Control everyone. Don't yeah, exactly. That. Yeah. It's not appropriate. Like, um, um, real quick, I added guys. some, like, animated gifs on the side that are, like, sparkly. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Dude, I think Saber's going to win. <gasps> oh, my gosh. She turned that around. Go, oh, girl. Yeah, like, hey, it's... Dude. She was at, like, 1 to 18. And, um... She has a pretty full line of of creatures out. I think yeah. she, I, I think she heard us talking about the altar of wishes and she was like, <laughs> I can't lose right now. People are paying attention to what's going on. So everyone be sure to cheer Saber on. <laughs> and then just so you guys know, um, we are going to be doing a Q&A right after we show the altar of wishes. But I know Iceblaze93 has been really curious about this all day. He wants to know if there, we're ever going to be seeing maybe some like alternative art for different cards. He's a huge uh, Alia fan, and he really wants a blonde Alia. So. Alia <laughs> nice. uh. is one of my cards too. I like Alia as well. Um, alternate arts, yeah. We're gonna have to come up with some uh, maybe achievements or something like that to make those alternates. But we're we're really into doing the um, alternates as well. Just more opportunities for us to like. Um, you know, uh, explore the character design, do different versions of it, you know. So, we're all for it. Mm -hmm. You guys want a, a blonde Alia, too? <laughs> and uh, just so you guys know, Saber actually won. Yeah, congrats. Nicely done. Saber was victorious. Uh -huh. Yay. Yay. And, and then she's going to be showing off the Altar of Wishes, so just be sure to kind of like check out what's going on at stream. And she's going to show you guys how you can select those cards or possibly get the card that you're missing out on. And while you guys are checking that out, be sure to ask some questions in chat for our devs. Like, they're, they're here to answer questions for you guys and make them super, super difficult and hard to uh, answer uh, as well. Or not. <laughs> super easy. Yeah. What's your favorite card? Uh, actually, we did that one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we did that one. What, did, what card do you hate? <laughs> if there was like if there was like one creature that you could go back and redo, which one would it be? <laughs> oh, that's a look at their face. Ooh. Uh, I, I'll uh, pass on that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Rustling Rose wants to know what do you think is maybe like the strongest combo that you can utilize in Dual Champions? Strongest combo. Strongest combo. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, the infamous Wombo Combo. I don't know. I don't like that name, but it's been called that on the the meta the, by the community. It's uh, the Ice Splinters and the Song of the Lost Combo, oh. which wipes up the board. That's annoying. I hate yeah, that. it's vicious. 
Wombo? It's vicious, but it's it's a, a combo that you can use only once. That's true. Yeah, yeah that, that is true. Mm -hmm. But it does a lot of work. Does a lot of what? Sorry. Work, a lot of work. Like it, it helps you out a lot. Like helps you. Oh, yeah, it's like a turning point in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's the feel that uh, uh, an epic should have. That's true. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. TSN turning point. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have a question from IceBlaze93. So um, do you feel that Inferno and Necropolis got weaker cards to maybe help balance the whole, all of the, everything together maybe a little bit more? Uh, they got a bit. Uh, less attention that the, than the rest because uh, Haven and Sanctuary were requiring much more uh, to, to get on par with the rest. Well, Haven uh, always had this kind of uh, on the verge of being OP and on the verge of being like the, the, the weakest faction because there was always the, the kind of this combo that, that enables it. But we wanted to make an effort to, to make it sure that there, there were more ways to play Haven than just having the, the, the Sun of on the deck that we're seeing right now. Uh, same thing goes for uh, Sanctuary, in a way. Uh, there's Ishuma that's really strong, but we wanted to enable uh, other uh, um, heroes as well. So we spent a lot less time on uh, Inferno and Necro because they weren't requiring that much. But we, I think that we came up with uh, really cool ideas for them. It's just maybe not as uh, thought up uh, as, as the rest. And sometimes when you, we see that uh, there's a card that might uh, enable a, a really huge combo and we have uh, the, the expansion that's coming out like in, in two weeks, we're going to go play it safe and tweak it just so, to make it really, really safe not to enable a, uh, an OP combo. All right. Well. I hope that answers the, the, your question. So let's take a look at the um, the altar here. Uh, so for the people that aren't as familiar um, with how this all works, you've got wild cards that you sort of put into this, um, and the cards they cost wild cards, and then you get the specific card back out. So how does one attain these wild cards? For those that don't know. You want to answer? Why do, why do I? Go for it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I just lost because of you. Oh. <laughs> I had lost that game, but anyways, here you go. <laughs> so uh, the ways to, to, to get wild cards is just uh, you, you have to buy packs, and you'll find them in packs. That That's as simple as that. Uh, once you get your first uh, wild card, the, uh, the Altar of Wishes uh, gets unlocked. And uh, to be able to, to buy cards with wild cards in the Altar of Wishes, you, get, you have to get uh, at least 200 cards of the, the, the expansion that you want. So if you want cards from Forgotten Wars, you need a, at least 200 cards of that expansion in order to be able to get cards through wild cards. That, so that it's really, really simple. Uh, you're getting bonus wild cards if you're buying uh, boxes uh, two. Uh, because um, uh, a box contains 10 packs, and e in each pack you're going to get a lot of wild cards, like you're seeing on the, on the stream, right? Mm -hmm. Right there, uh, you see uh, Sabres just bought a Tornado? Was that? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you, you can get a lot of cards uh, through that, and uh, the design was to enable the uh, Buying packs, uh, buying cards that uh, are like uh, the old cards are cheaper, so that you can get a really, really decent uh, collection with just one box, really, because it's going to get you like 30, 35 uh, wild cards, just like that. So it's you're going to be able to buy a lot of packs, uh, a lot of uh, cards with that. Yeah, the box is totally worth it. Mm -hmm. That's how I got my out uh, because I've been waiting to get like a Shuma. For like forever, <laughs> never like getting. I was just grinding away and grinding away, opening pack mm -hmm. after pack, get myself a box, hook up some wild cards, boom, the Shuma in my hand or in my in my collection. <laughs> nice. Um, and so you, Linsky, I know we kind of touched on the fact that you guys, as designers, um, obviously want to make all the improvements all at once if you could, but 
you know, with limited time and resources, that's not always possible. Um, Ulinsky uh, is wondering why there's no filter in the altar of wishes, and then my addition onto that is, like, will there be one added on sometime in the future? That's something we want to do because it's mm -hmm. really, uh, it's annoying uh, even yeah. to, to, to have that, but uh, it was either we put uh, the, the filters, but the altar of wishes get postponed, mm -hmm. or we get the altar of wishes right now. So the choice was really clear. Uh, yeah. It was a, a, a fact, uh, a feature that was really ne needed in, uh, in the meta. So we decided to, to put it like that and to improve on it maybe a, a, a tad later. But yeah, we have uh, designs for uh, on the table for uh, revamps of all those menus. Cool. All right, there you go, Lunsky. It's kind of it's kind of in line with uh, with Chase's theme about building slow and steady kind yeah. of thing. Um, yeah. And we're a small team. We're not exactly you know we're not like you know a billion people here or whatever. So, you know, if we build it, you know, we keep working on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, pretty much uh, every feature that uh, people are talking about, we have that in our heads, but we have to find the time, the right time to do it. Because if something takes us like six months to do. And we have nothing to, to release in, in between. That's kind of boring. Right. So we have to choose wisely what we uh, we release each time. So I think I we have time for one more question. So Pixel, do you want to pick the last one? We should make it super difficult, like super intense. Oh my God. Pick yeah. the last question. I need to do a math question. Yeah. Math. <laughs> so <laughs> if two cards are placed on a plank, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Three or C is always the answer. Make a multiple choice. <laughs> it's A, B, or C. Always three or C. <laughs> so I know we have, you guys have been loading us up on questions in chat. And just so you guys know, if you do want to ask more questions, you can totally holler at Dual Champions on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Chase will awkwardly look at them and maybe try to mm -hmm. figure out the answers, maybe, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Or, or, you know, you can also holler at Dual Champions on Facebook, and it's facebook.com forward slash yes. Dual Champions, or twitter.com forward slash Dual Champions, and you'll be able to holler at them and find out all of the secret, super awesome upcoming Dual Champions news, because I know you guys love the game. And so, Pixel, have you decided yes. upon so a question? For our last question, um, I kind of like this one. Jasperella, she asked... Uh, are there any cards that are just good to have in any deck? Like, is there anything that's just good? Death Seekers. Death Seekers. Death Seekers. <laughs> DAs. <laughs> yeah. Well, Anonymous. <laughs> DAs, because uh, right now DAs have uh, so many solutions that's to play true. against. But uh, Paladin Seekers? Death Seeker, yeah. Yes. Um, that's pretty much the, the all around guy. Yeah. I mean, I know I totally love having him in my decks, a few of them, actually. Oh, they're really useful. <laughs> Death I guess Seekers. On the, the type of decks, but really, Bowded Seeker is kind of the overall. Uh, you, you can add four of them in any deck, and you're sure to. Uh, it's a good choice. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I think it's. Do you guys should we announce the grand prize winners? Is it is it time? The time for, is it? Let me look at my let me look at my watch. I think it's a grand prize announcement time. So basically, the way for you guys to get in on the grand prize, you know, to win this special code, we're gonna actually give away one on Twitter and one on Facebook. And so I just random number generated, real quick, mm -hmm. uh, our our winners. And so our grand prize Facebook winner is uh, his name is. Whew, that is uh, interesting yeah. to Quinn. Quinn? I think it's Kian. Kian? Kian Lim. Kian Lim, congrats. Kian Lim. Yay, Yay. Kian Lim. <laughs> so we're going to be contacting Kian Lim on Facebook, hooking you up with that special code. And then on Twitter, Pixel, take it away. I, I wrote in chat. I live to game. Oh, awesome. Ooh. Kind of fitting. Yeah. Kind of fitting name. I like it. I'm glad you won this code. Yeah, congrats. You can game forever. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to the champions. And so we're just going to do a quick closing. So basically, we just want to say thanks to our super amazing guests. They uh, they kicked some butt. We have uh, Simon. Yep, he's got Dan. We got Dan. In the house. Yeah, Dan in the house. Simon in the house. 
You're not even trying to say my my uh Last my family name. Venu. Is that close enough? Close yeah. Enough? Okay, That's well, the achievement, though. Ah, no achievement for you. Oh. <laughs> but you know, those are those are our special our special you know guests. That was our art director Dan, and then our game designer Simon, and then of course our player experience manager Chase Straight, aka Zapandar. Yeah. He, he did some work, and <laughs> we also want to thank Twitch TV and Ubisoft. If you want a prize day, we're gonna reach out to you. Follow us on Twitch. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Esper the Frag Dolls. And finally, Pixel, do you want to close out on anything else? I think that's it. I hope to see you guys in game and uh, can't wait to kick some of that booty. Oh, you guys are going to get kicked in the butt. No worries. But be sure to leave Kidding, us. We love you. <laughs> yeah, we, we do love you. But be sure to leave us feedback on your favorite thing about the stream today because, you know, we want to do this more for you guys. So if you loved checking out Dual Champions with us, Holler at us. Tell us. Tell us you loved it, and maybe we'll do it again. Maybe we'll we'll harass them into mm. uh, into letting us do it. So I think it's time to check out that trailer one more time. Once again, thanks everyone. Follow Dual Champions. Follow the Frag Dolls. We love you guys. Bye.